Coming up, I finally get a Spanish Navaja, I get a French dagger, and we talk about handle-wrapped knives. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment this past week was from Harvest Blades. He was commenting on the Turner CNC Elvia video that I put up. Uh, that knife was on loan from Jock's Knife, and it's a uh, nice pricey pickle. He says the Elvia is sweet. I carry a fixed blade on my belt, often my CRKT Obaki, but often a Dexter Russell pairing knife. I like it better than the Victorinox. I made the Kydex myself and added the pinky groove. And since I had the Kydex already, my cost was like 12 bucks. That's hard to beat for that price. And while it isn't as tough as I, as it as it should, should I stab to the bone, the pairing knife with, would most likely get me through that event and end up in evidence. I work private security and executive protection, so having such a small, light, but effective knife near my midline is a great tool for breaking a grapple and creating space to safely deploy my handgun. Hard to justify the additional cost and weight of the Elvia, uh, but maybe if I get my hands on it, I'd change my mind. Well, Harvest Blades, uh, you may, it may be the sort of thing where you have such respect for the format, the Bacall style knife, uh, that you only, um, you only carry the Elvia to church or, uh, you know, in fancy dress or in private. But, uh, but when you're working the job where your knife could, uh, definitely end up in evidence, should it be used? Well, yeah, stick with that. Uh, and by the way, I've never heard of Dexter Russell looked it up. They look nice. They look similar to the Victorinox, but the handle to blade ratio is nicer. Bigger, bigger blade, it looks like. Uh, I will definitely have to check that out. All right. All that said, uh, thank you guys for commenting, watching, liking over this past week. I do appreciate it. Uh, now, let's get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my front right pocket today, I had the Benny by Jack Wolf Knives. And this is, uh, I have carried this more as a front right pocket knife uh, than any other. Oh, it's nasty too. It's got covered with stuff on the blade, but than any other Jack Wolf knife. Uh, I uh, have only carried the clipped Jack Wolf Knives with the, uh, with the locks in my front pocket. So that's only about four models at this point. Um, but this one is just big enough it's 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 just a bigger blade than all of them though not so much in length and overall length but in beefiness width and overall feel this is the this is just the bee's knees and and i would say the toughest feeling jack wolf knife so this has done a lot of summer front right pocket you know the, the reason that's a big deal is usually my front right pocket is occupied by a folder that has at least a 3.5 inch blade that's the minimum um, there are a few exceptions. The um, Spyderco Yojimbo is one of them, and this is another. Uh, I carry this in my front pocket all summer long, and it would be just fine. Uh, I, I really, really like this knife a lot, and uh, it is a great pencil sharpening knife. Uh, Jim suggested I make a pencil sharpening video. I think I will do that. Uh, this is one of the best. For me, a pencil sharpening knife, a good one, has to be very, very thin because you have to be able to... Uh, glide with the either that convex or that flat ground edge uh, kind of against the barrel of the pencil so you can shave off really fine pieces i don't like facets in my uh in my pencil anymore in my pencil uh, tip now i like them as much like a pencil sharpener mechanical pencil sharpener as possible and for me the super fine blades do that this is definitely one of them though it, it's capable of a lot more all right next up <clears throat> Instead of a slip joint today, I had this. I've been carrying this all summer. I love this thing. This is the Primitive Wicket by uh, Knives by Nuge. Primitive because it is wrapped in jute cord, and that, that has a cool primitive old uh, school look and feel. The thing that I love about this knife, the reason I've been carrying it so much, is that it is so very thin. So thin and so light, and actually this handle... Uh, which you would expect being jute that's been impregnated with epoxy. You would expect it to be kind of itchy 
kind of like wool or sackcloth. Uh, but it rides next to the skin really, really well. That's why I've been wearing it so much this summer. I can just throw it under my shirt and it doesn't bother my my chest or my stomach when it when it touches it. You know, I know that sounds weird, but sometimes I need like with every other um, neck knife, I need an, a layer between me and the knife, like a T-shirt. This one, not so. I love this knife and it's a really handy little knife. This is 80 CRV. I think I've, I've got to... Uh, I've got to strop that edge a little bit. I do use this a lot, and I don't tend to baby it at all, so it's starting to rust ever so slightly on the uh, on the edge. ADCRV2, not rust, but a little bit of corrosion starting there. But, man, what an awesome knife. Great sheath, too. I know that Offensive Industries makes sheaths that work with the Wicket, uh, which I'd love to get, but I'd, I'd rather have that on a, on a larger knife. So the one that comes uh, by Tom of Knives by Nuge is quite awesome. And it comes with this leather cord, which eventually will punk out and, and crumble. Whoops. Hitting the camera here. Sorry about that. But uh, check out this cool connector, the Wazoo connector. And it will see that. It's got a little trigger here. And it will stop the... Uh... What I'm trying to say is if you have this around your neck and you're concerned that you're in the woods and you might like garret yourself with this that will eventually give way uh kind of like the the bead cord or something like that a piece of 550 cord which is how i always have my almost always have my neck knives around my neck it's probably the most dangerous thing if you're concerned about choking yourself out with your neck knife i'm not so concerned with that but uh, uh that's what that wazoo uh, fastener is very very good for so i love that primitive wicket i'm i'm it's kind of outside my wheelhouse because it's very much a um what do you call it? Outdoors knife, uh, a uh, camping knife, uh, a field craft or bushcraft kind of knife. But the knives by Nuge knives are, are field craft knives that really, I don't know, they appeal to me. And then having this one has uh, taken it over the top. OK, next up is the beautiful Nova 2. And I, I say beautiful uh, because I didn't make it. I did design the blade, but uh, I, I feel like. Having this go through the hand, having this built by Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives has transformed my design into something totally new. So I can I can say it's beautiful without being conceited. <laughs> he really did an awesome job. Uh, these Nova 2s, uh, this pre-order is open until the end of August. And each Nova 2 will ship with an ivory G10 handle. Right now it looks like blown out white, but that's ivory G10 with a... With a uh, a bit of uh, the Anzo pattern there, uh, grooved in there. Uh, white, I mean, I'm sorry, red um, liners. So this whole thing is evocative of a Japanese knife. I think those colors, the black of the blade or the dark gray of the blade, the red and the white sort of evoke that with the black hardware. It's a Kiridashi blade, which is a Japanese style utility blade with a little extra point in case you have to thrust it into something tenacious extremely comfortable handle uh this knife uh this 154 cm by the way deeply hollow ground it's extremely sharp get all that out of the way but this knife is really comfortable this has also been getting a lot of summer carry for me it's been this and the tkl knives agent 001 two knives i had a hand in designing and um i've been carrying them a lot because of that but also this one in particular is very kind to the love handles, which I'm sad to say I have not ridded myself of yet. But this short, curved, uh, very softly contoured handle uh, not only fits all size hands so far, like even big mitts really well, um, but it also is gentle on the extra fat around your waist. OK, last up on me for emotional support, I had this and this knife never never uh fails to bring emotional support emotional support of the self-defense kind i guess i'd say this is the absolutely beautiful uh tier one uh, i'm sorry the dc blades uh shielden tie large scythe um justin of tier one gear reviews and uh, a design uh design partner have created dc blades and they've released a number of knives through various uh, companies and OEMs, like so licensed designs and then OEMs. This one appears to be a licensed design because I see the, the shield and branding, but I really think of this as a Justin knife, or I should say as a DC Blades knife. Uh, 
an amazing folding pakal. I have three folding four folding pakals, and uh, it's a rare breed, and this is an excellent one. Uh, one thing I love about this, besides that incredible sickle-shaped blade, is the backspacer that stands proud of those contoured titanium handles all the way around and uh, gives you that gear pattern that so easily and nicely sinks into the fat of the hand and the thumb. And your grip on this thing is just ironclad, as the politicians used to like to say. Ironclad. Do you remember the ironclad lockbox? Who said that? Horse crap. But anyway, uh, this is uh, an ironclad grip. It's it's also It also gives you a bit of a wasp waisted, or even you could see that kind of as a coffin shaped handle. So <clears throat> neutral. Uh, so you could have it in this pickle or you could have it edge out or you could use it like a normal person, <laughs> like a knife uh, that you're going to open stuff with like boxes and stuff. Uh, Pickles are great for self-defense, but they are also pretty darn practical. This one, though, does have quite a um, quite a refined tip, but they all do. They all should anyway. So just be careful with the tip. Don't drop it on concrete like yours truly. And uh, and you'll be good to go. All right. This is what I had on me today. Uh, a fine, fine assortment of knives. And I realize as I look at it and I take personal pride in this, uh, that I've interviewed everyone and I know everyone who made these knives. And I'm not saying that to name drop. Obviously, that's the bread and butter of this show. We interview knife makers. But um, I, I love that I have uh, and have been able to support uh, some of the people making these things. Other people um, like like Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives sends me a new Jack Wolf knife every time one comes out. So, I mean, the, the generosity is greatly, greatly appreciated. And I, I understand uh, how good I have it because uh, it took me a long time to have it this good. And, um, well, all right, I'm putting these away. You let me know. Drop them in the comments below what you are carrying today. Uh, I do like to find out. And uh, let me know if you have any go-to knives for the summer that just are so comfortable for you because it's hot as Hades. My God, it's been hot here in Virginia uh, over the past couple of weeks. And a, a heavy knife banging around in the pocket has not been an option. So leave those down below. Okay, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to talk about four cool new knives out on the market. We'll, tech, we'll take a look at a few knives in the state of the collection. Uh, but before we get there, I just want to say if you want to help support the show, which... Uh, is greatly uh, appreciated. You can do it in so many ways. You can watch, you can like, you can comment, you can share with a friend, which is amazing. Uh, that does so much for the show. Uh, or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scan the QR code and help support the show monetarily. Uh, those who do uh, enjoy Thursday Night Knives every third Thursday of the month when we give away a knife. Uh, so go check it out. The knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Become a patron. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. The knifejunkie.com slash battle box. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. We got four really cool uh, new knives in Life Knife News today. One of them, one of which we've seen here right on our stage, but it's uh, it's now it's starting to pick up public steam. So I wanted to draw attention to it. But first, Real Steel and Ostop Hell. Ostop Hell, uh, Polish designer, great dude. Um, uh, I've had him on the show a few times and I've met him in person a couple of times at the real steel. Uh, was it real steel? Where was he? Maybe best tech at, at, at one of the tables at blade show. I see him every year. He's a great guy, but he also has a really unique design language. And this is his first that I've seen dagger, um, uh, uh, fixed blade dagger coming out through real steel and look at this thing it's futuristic it's cool it is double-edged it's not like the the spider co nightstick it doesn't do that bait and switch look it looks just like a dagger it would be awesome as a dagger but it only has one edge this one indeed has two edges skeletonized skeletonized that is a 2.7 for for layman three and a quarter inch <clears throat> sorry 3.27 or three and a quarter inch k110 double-edged blade now k110 is analogous to uh, d2 i believe it's made by udelholm um so it's a uh 
uh, a European D2, heavily skeletonized and compact. It's got a, a uh, Kydex sheath, 1.07 ounces. Pretty awesome. No release date on this. This knife here uh, reminds me of another one I'm going to show you uh, in the state of the collection. New one I got, but this is a beautiful knife for a couple of reasons. First of all, double-edged dagger. I love it. Second of all, really cool, unique, futuristic design by a designer I admire greatly. Uh, uh, three, the lightning holes are interesting. They're not just holes uh, you, uh, evenly spaced along the handle. They're two kind of bullet-shaped holes on either end of the handle. And four, <laughs> lost count. I'm not a math guy. And four, this would be great to wrap. If you're interested in wrapping things in jute or doing a sukamaki wrap or any of that, this would be a sweet knife to do that on. So a uh, big fan of this uh, so far anyway. No release date yet. Real steel. Real steel. They have some cool stuff. All right, next up, Artisan Cutlery. Uh, this one by Dirk Pinkerton. I've shown this. I uh, just released a video last week, I believe, of the Banjara, a Middle Eastern-inspired knife. Uh, in the Nomad series, and it, it is a loose series or maybe a series in the mind of the creator, Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, over 10 years ago, I'd say, or maybe about 10 years ago, he released or designed a knife for Kaiser called the Nomad. It was a very successful upswept Persian style blade. He's done a few in that series um, uh, since then. Uh, one of them, another one of them recently, the Arroyo kind of looks like that. Uh, but But this one here is uh it is exceptional i've i saw pictures of it all over blade show it was on the big posters it, it's a big release for them it's okay let's start with the handle really really nice uh titanium frame lock handle with with uh, a milled groove pattern in it uh, that makes it very comfortable uh a non ambidextrous um milled pocket clip that's uh follows the back contour of the handle but the blade, look at the blade. It's interesting and unique because it's all belly, like a Persian will be, but it does have about a third that is still a bit straight. So uh, a usable uh, flat area, if you will, by the Ricasso. But it's an upswept Persian blade with all that that implies. Great at slashing, great at uh, 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 slashing and and uh, and cutting, if you will. Uh it doesn't leave you wondering where the point is way up in the stratosphere. It, it has the point uh, basically uh, between the, from my estimation, between the spine and the center line of the pivot. So it's not, it's a Persian, but it's got a downward canted blade so that by the time you get to the blade, it's not too uh, far up and, and weird to use. You can still use this knife very well in kind of drag cuts and pull cuts without having to ch change your posture of your arm too much so a very thoughtful design as we always expect from dirk pinkerton uh he makes great knives that really really honest to goodnessly work great as tactical self-defense knives at least theoretically i haven't fought with any of them but they also work great as edc knives cutting your sandwich cutting that string uh you know breaking down some boxes, they're good to go. Uh, you, you get jumped in an alley and you're able to actually draw it and have it ready to go in your hand. Great ergonomics, great blade placement and orientation. He just makes awesome knives. And Artisan Cutlery, or he designs awesome knives and he makes awesome custom knives. But Artisan Cutlery, in this case, manufactures beautifully. S90V, S90V, that's pretty awesome. Uh, 4.55 ounces. It's available now. I'm a huge fan of this knife, and I actually have one on loan from Dirk. It's a it's a, a prototype, so it's totally unmarked. It's sweet, but I got to send it back to him, and I'm doing that tomorrow. Uh, so highly recommend that Banjara. All right, next up from Spiderco, a sprint run, and usually I don't pay much attention because I'm not a steel nerd. I have major respect for Spyderco and their exploration of various steels, whether it's through uh, sprint runs like we're about to see or the Mule uh, series of knives. Yeah, that's their main test bed for steels. This new one caught my eye because uh, I love the way it looks. Look at this thing. Look at that beautiful combination. Uh, so we have a black blade and maroon FRN. I mean, maroon like burgundy. I want to drink that handle. It's so beautiful looking. Uh, but what is this? This is micro melt. 
This is a micro melt sprint run. You're like, what's micro melt? Because that's what I was like. Uh, micro melt is a high end steel from Carpenter. We hear a lot about Crucible. This one is a Carpenter. This is CTS PD number one, not to be mistaken with BD one by CTS, uh, which uh, by Carpenter, which is also uh, which is a lesser steel. Let's say this is sort of the um, Carpenter version of Crucible's crew wear. A, a blade steel I have on one knife, and it is exquisite. Um, crew wear, in my experience with this knife, which is the Steingraber Shark, uh, it just goes forever. And if you're if you're a lightweight like myself in terms of cutting chores and needs, it really literally goes forever. So here are these beautiful um, sprint runs here. It's going to come in the... Um, oh, before I get off of that, look, before I get to that, let me just say... Uh, took some notes on Micromelt. It's an advanced tool steel, very, very high in edge retention and toughness. Um, and and then it's semi-stainless. So, you know, there are the three things you want out of a steel. Uh, you want its um, resistance to corrosion. You want its toughness, meaning ability to take impact without chipping or shattering, and its edge retention. And usually you only get two out of the three. But there are some awesome steels like Magna Cut, uh, that that kind of bring them all together. Well, this one uh, brings them mostly together in a st semi stainless steel, uh, but Cold Steel has gone the extra mile and coated those blades with a Thai carbon nitride black coating. So um, it will protect that semi stainless steel, and it will also make it look so enviable. It's so nice looking i gotta say even for a weird looking spider co and let's face it they're weird looking but we've gotten used to it like et it's all good this is going to come out in the delica four the andela the endora four and the one that i want the police four uh so these are available now but uh you better jump on it and i'm talking to myself too because it's a sprint run and they'll go fast all right, lastly in this list of cool new knives out on the market is from Rosecraft, and it's their second Barlow. And it's a looker. What can I say? It's a looker. It's a clip point uh, D2 2.9 inch Barlow. D2 is their go to steel over there at Rosecraft, and they they do it up. They do it to the nines. You, you watch uh, Scab Choir Boys Cutlery, he's on his second D2 Rosecraft knife, or he's using it every day in hard industrial applications, uh, cutting sandblasting hoses and all sorts of crazy stuff. And these knives just hold out. And, uh, you know, he's got this goal of cutting until they can't cut anymore. He did it first with the first Barlow, that um, the Otter. Oh, I can't remember what the name of the first Barlow was, but he used that every day for like 45 days until he had to resharpen it. And doing like real hard stuff, not just like, you know, clipping off. Uh, errant threads and stuff like that. So the new one here, uh, the Otter Creek is a beauty. 2.9 inch D2 clip point, sleeve board pattern. So it's um, rounded on both ends, but fatter at the at the tail end, the pommel. And that is, though it looks red, yellow sandalwood. And um, I would never do this, but I love the way sandalwood smells when you burn it. Um, the bolster is stamped with an otter paw. I got to say, that's the one thing that eh, I don't like so much on this knife. I, I don't like Barlow's to have any stand. I, honestly, I don't like Barlow's to have anything. Um, I know the other Rosecraft uh, Barlow has the RC. Their logo it looks nice. I, th I think it's I think it's better, but I don't like Barlow's to have anything stamped on the um, bolster or anything inlaid on the handle. The 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 it's it's too much because it's a third and two thirds. You have two thirds handle, one third bolster. You add something to either one, it's too much. If you had a shorter bolster, way more handle, and you add a a a, a badge to the handle, it looks fine. But with these visual ratios, Barlow's with any sort of marking on the handle itself, ah, eh, doesn't work for me. But still, an awesome knife. I'm sure this will be super cool. And and what I'm Thing here is all very, very personal taste stuff. Uh, 2.7 ounces is this, and it's available now. There are a lot of Rosecrafts that are available, new ones that have come out. That that uh, that moose is it a moose? I want to get. Uh, they they just have a lot of cool knives that have come out recently. Uh, three of them um, modern, and four of them uh, old old school slip joints. So definitely 
go check them out all right coming up we're gonna get to the state of the collection i'm gonna show you two really cool knives that i just got uh but before we get there be sure to like comment subscribe just hit the like button that's the thumbs up even if you're you're kind of on the on the uh on the on the fence you're like he talks too much and i just wish he'd get to the knives just still give me the thumbs up i'll get the point and i'll move on all right coming up the state of the collection the shockwave tactical torch is your ultimate self-defense companion featuring a powerful led bulb that lasts 100,000 hours a super sharp crenulated bezel and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts don't settle for ordinary choose the shockwave tactical torch TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. First up in the state of the collection this week is a knife that I feel like I should have had years ago. Uh, but this is a legit Spanish Navaja. And I say legit because it's from Spain. It's made by Joker. And um, it's the traditional construction. It does not have a ratchet lock. It has a, uh, so now I need to do more research. I'm not sure if this is what the modern Navajas have lockwise normally, or I remember reading about these knives many times where the tangs here had a ratchet and it would click. Um, but look at this beautiful knife. My God. So, you know, I'm a huge fan of the Navaja. It's one of my favorite historical blades. And uh, in terms of historical folders, it is my very, very favorite. Um, I, it was on a whim. I was getting a whole bunch of stuff for the household on Amazon. And I thought, Amazon's got everything these days. Um, let me see if they have a Navaja. Just, it was just by, uh, it was just a little whim. And lo and behold, they sell Joker knives and Joker makes this. And um, so I was really happy to get this. I would like to expand my collection of Navajas, my collection of one <laughs> Navaja. Uh, to a Barbudo and to some traditional made ones. I'd love to go to Spain and go on a knife buying tour. But uh, until that happens, this will suffice. Very, very sharp pointy blade and extremely thin hollow ground blade. I mean, this this would this is a this is a great old school like street fighting knife. I know it's it's used for other stuff and all that, but that's what the Navaja was about originally. You know, no more swords. Can't carry swords anymore. So how are we going to settle our beefs? Locking folders, and we'll make them big. And, and uh, you know, so they get very, very large. But this one here has a nice stag handle here and brass uh, bolsters. And it's got that traditional steer horn shape, which does amazing things for handle to blade ratio because the handle thins out so much and it curves up to accommodate the long blade. It, it it almost looks like the handle goes to there. Of course, it continues, but it almost looks like the handle goes to the end of the stag. So when you look at these, they have really great blade to handle ratios because the upward curved belly of that Spanish clip point nestles into that downward horn shape of the handle. All right, I'm going to show this to you with two of my absolute favorite modern Navajas. You know I'm going to do this one. Uh, this is the Espada Large. And uh, the actually, this has more of an American-style clip-point blade, if you ask me. Spanish-style uh, Spanish clip-point blades, to me, have long, dramatic, uh, curved uh, clips here, and um, or, or long, straight clips. This one just looks like a Bowie, and that's, I'm totally fine with that. It's no biggie. Uh, a second one here is the Dirk Pinkerton designed um, <clears throat> asymmetrical made uh, night horse. So here you see, that's the kind of clip I'm talking about long uh, with the, with the shelf up here, you kind of get the same thing out of this knife. But so one of, one of my favorite inspirational knives, uh, you know, inspiring modern classics like the night horse and the Espada and uh, hearkening back to a, to a day when, a man's honor was defended with his blade. And uh, of course, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to do that these days. But every once in a while, and this only comes when I'm driving the car. You know, I drive in a heavily trafficked area. If you live in Atlanta, you have me beat. But if not, you know, I live in the worst place to drive. And um, 
my honor is besmirched on a daily basis. Um, <clears throat> and uh, every once in a while, I, I would like to call someone out for a Navaja duel. Uh, but I have self-control, so I've stopped it. Uh, one thing I want to show you is just uh, closing this. This leaf up here comes up. And as it levers up, it releases the tension off that leaf spring on the blade. And then you close it. There is no snap or any sort of springiness to it at all. You push it with with a lot of force into the into the handle. So it does not spring back like a lockback. Very, very psyched about this purchase. The second purchase here, um, this came on in the same order. Look at me, I'm such a good guy getting all this stuff for the house. Let me buy myself two knives. But this was pretty damn inexpensive. And I want this to be in the category that we're going to be talking about, handle-wrapped knives. But as it just arrived and I attempted a couple of different wraps, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this one. Uh, but this is a Fred Perrin Daga, Le Daga. And uh, Fred Perrin is a French um, master of the blade. He was a commando, a French commando, and did a lot of that kind of work in his earlier days. Now he looks like, and uh, and this is not in any way an insult. He is cool as hell, and I spent a good bit of time talking with him and Zach Wingard at at the Wingard wearables table uh, during Blade Show, and that was like that was like me talking with LeBron James for most people or whatever, uh, or or Tom Cruise. I was like, I'm standing here with Fred Perrin, and I got the brains of Zach Wingard right here, and we're all talking about weapons. This is so cool. But anyway, uh, Fred Perrin designs a lot of small and andy hand makes but designs a lot of small covert blades he is a big fan of the spike uh because it leaves no mess it leaves less mess than a blade he loves spikes for tactical use he loves small blades and uh this one i couldn't resist because it's a coffin shaped dagger um and the way it's set up either way you go you have no guard so either way you go with these uh pinchable coils here You've got an extremely sharp 440C edge here. This is 440C made by Max Knives in France. So he is French and he has them made in France. I have a uh, neck knife by him that's also super, super cool. This one, I gotta, I have to admit, with the sort of sharp facets here on the on the top of the blade, a uh, top of the handle, it's a little uncomfortable. Not not deal breaking uncomfortable, but I think I want to wrap this in jute. In jute. I do love the wrapped handles. So why don't we get to that? So right here, the Fred Parent Ledag. Led, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Ledagu, Ledag, something like that. But it looks cool. I like the combination of letters. And I love the way this knife looks. Um, and no doubt, in a pinch, it would uh, it'd save your bacon. It's a 3.75 inch blade. Very nice Kydex sheath. All right, let's get to the main topic at hand, and this is wrapped knives and, and implements of chaos, mostly knives. I've uh, really used to despise, despise, sorry, despise wrapped handles, especially um, paracord. I still don't like paracord wrapped handles, and there's too much play between the outer sleeve of the paracord and then the seven fibers that run within I love uh, paracord for many different things, but not knife handles. I feel like there's too much give. Yes, even if it's uh, impregnated with epoxy. Now, if you take the paracord and you gut it and you pull the strands out, that's a different story. Uh, that's more like a lace. So uh, a couple of years back, I started embracing wrapping knives with jute cord. Uh, jute, a natural material, uh, appears on, I think, some of these Filipino stuff, not in the string form i'm going to show you now but um you know some of this wrapping here with the natural materials uh, inspired me so first up this is my main car fixed blade if i don't need the bowie because i have a big bowie in there and if i don't need the thing in the back uh, so this is if i have to cut something and it's immediate and i don't want the bowie this is the roach belly from cold steel that's in a sheath i made myself uh this blade i love the blade it's a it's their 4116 krupp krupp stahl so it's a it's a cheap german steel but a very good 
tough German steel. Uh, every time I pull out the roach belly, I tell the story of a uh, when I lived in New York, a friend of mine's cousin was coming through town and he was uh, on the road for like four years or something, just bumming around. He was a young like post-college dude, um, naturalist type, just camping, camping his way across the country. His only knife was the roach belly. He told me, my only knife is a cold steel. I was so excited. I thought he was going to pull out something uh, that was going to really get my motor running like a like a trail master. And he pulled out the roach belly. And I was like, no kidding. He's like, yeah, you would you would be shocked at how amazing this knife is and, and what it's done for me in this period. Uh, so it does come with that jimping, but it does not come with this uh, sculpted handle here. And it does not come with that jute wrap. So I sculpted the handle uh, right after I got it, and I made that sheath. I, I actually bought this knife to practice making Kydex sheaths, but discovered how awesome the knife is. And um, finally, uh, oh, I was finding that when my hands were sweaty, uh, this knife, e even though I put the um, the grooves in it, it was it felt slippery in hand. So I wrapped it with jute, and then eventually I wrapped I. Uh, I did what I normally do, which is soak the jute in not epoxy. I probably should do epoxy, but I use uh, amber shellac. And the reason I use that is because when I was doing a lot of paintings and like really into painting and doing art, uh, I would pour shellac on parts of my painting and then burn it. And you would get this beautiful uh, effect. And also it got really, really hard. So I that's what I've been doing now with the with the uh, jute blades. This one I have not burned. Uh, yet or probably won't because I didn't when I did it but that jute just adds a dimension this way of grip that is amazing I love this knife for 12 to I don't know I think maybe it's up to with inflation 17 bucks or something this is such a great knife I highly recommend it just make an impulse purchase even if 17 bucks stings uh, because I've been there for sure even if 17 bucks stings, throw it in your uh, Amazon bin and get it when you when you feel when you feel you can because it's freaking awesome. And it comes with a new sheath. It came with a uh, a nylon pouch sheath when I got it, but now it comes in a sort of kydexy sheath. Next up is also a car knife. This is a Victorinox fruit knife, um, much altered. Uh, just like the comment up front. I had Kydex laying around, so I made the sheath. Cost me nothing. Uh, the this um, knife itself, I got on Amazon for ten bucks or something like that. But what did I do with the knife? I put it in the toaster oven and warmed it up, and then bent the handle so that you would get that nice Pical point orientation. That is the point not straight in line with your knuckles, but kind of up and and over. So if you, I'm going to go to the main camera here. If you're doing a back fist punch like this back fist, you get the point landing right where it needs to go. It's not pointing off over in that direction. It's right where it needs to go. So you bend that handle. This is a little tip I got from Ed Calderon. We all got from Ed Calderon. And then it's wrapped in a 220 cord. And then over that is a jute cord burned. Now, uh, the reason I did that is because Initially, I liked how thin it was. You just drop this whole package in the pocket. No one will ever see it. But it did not feel that secure in hand because it's a very thin handle. So with this little um, wrap in the center, just kind of in the middle of the palm, gives you something to grip onto. And then you have this finger groove here for orientation. You know that if it's in reverse grip and you feel that finger groove, it's going the way you want it with the tip down and the edge in. So that's a Victorinox fruit knife. I've had a number of them, but this is the only one I have left. I've given a few away and uh, I, I dig them. But I, I want to try out the, um, the, what was it? Something Russell knife that uh, the commenter up front left. Next is one that I just did, my most recently wrapped. And this is an old knife. This is my old cold steel spike from the, uh, from the first iteration of the spike where it was just wrapped with a very thin black cord. So I pulled that cord off years ago. I used to have this wrapped with a uh, 550 cord and, and then I had some other string on it. And I just took all that off and put on two layers of jute cord and extra with extra space here to give it a little more uh, belly in the grip because it's a very thin handle. 
soaked it with the uh, amber shellac, lit it on fire. Let this one go a little bit long. Whoops. Let this one go a little bit long so it's uh, a little bit blacker than I prefer. For uh, but we're just talking aesthetics in terms of feel and you know smell and all that. It doesn't smell. It doesn't feel tacky at all. You know sometimes uh, coatings. If you light them on fire bef before the right time, they will remain tacky forever. This is not the case here. Um, I love the cold steel spike, even though it's got looks like a blunt tip. This is just an absolutely wicked zero ground. Uh, I think it's three sixteenths. It's almost a quarter inch, but it's just wicked. And yeah, if I care to, I could I could grind that point down a little bit, make it a little bit sharper, uh, but no need really. Uh, that's a full four inches there, and you can reverse grip it, forward grip it in the Pical or the regular style. No matter how you grip this thing, it's so neutral. Uh, it'll do the work. It'll do the work. I just want to do the work. Okay, next up. I'm sorry. I was channeling um, someone else. Next up is from Fudo Forge. Now, this is a. this was an impulse buy. I'm upset because I saw Fudo Forge at Knife Show this at the Blade Show this year, and they were talking to someone when I noticed them, um, and I and so I didn't interrupt and I didn't get a chance to to tell them that last year at Blade Show 2023, I picked up one of these thirty dollar impulse buy scalpel things they had on their table. Uh, even though I'd never heard of them, they make amazing chef's knives. Fudo Forge does and other stuff, but this was out there, and I was like, that is sweet. It's thirty bucks. I'll take one, and it is incredibly sharp. I've made it even more so. It's incredibly sharp little scalpeloid thing. But I wrapped it again in jute cord uh, so that it had a bit of grip. It's still small, thin, and light enough that with my little uh, homemade pocket sheath with the little um, things so you can grab on, both of these uh, sheaths have little hooks so if you drop it in the pocket without any sort of other retention method you can pull it out of the pocket and this will hook on the inside of the pocket and drop back in you'll have your knife in hand but the sheath will be inside your pocket so i did the same thing with this this is an outstanding little little knife for all sorts of stuff i i've carried this in the pocket thinking Oh, this is how I could, I could like the commenter up front. I could create space with this little thing if I get in a grappling situation. And I'm like, yeah, Bob, you, you're not getting in grappling situations unless it's that time of the quarter. You're going to a martial arts class. I don't do it, you know, but it's great for utility. It's in the pocket. It's easy to get. It's a fixed blade. It looks cool. It's fun to pull out and use. And uh, I got to, I, I have to get in touch with Fudo Forge and let them know that this little scrap knife that they probably didn't think twice about uh, is one of my favorite little pocket knives, like in pocket fixed blades. Wrapped in jute and good to go. Let's see, put this back. So, so this list is half jute cord, half sukamaki or or Japanese uh, wrap. They, there are other names for it, and I can never remember the other names, but sukamaki is fun to say, and uh, it looks cool on paper. So. That's what I use. All right, next up is not exactly a knife, uh, but you've seen it plenty of times. It's a knife-adjacent implement. It is the Quill by Wingard Wearables. The Quill is a device that was um, conceived by Zach Wingard's wife, who's an awesome uh, woman. I met her at Blade Show and talked to her quite a bit. She's really cool. And she wanted a wearable weapon tool, which is what their uh, MTA is here. She wanted a wearable weapon tool that she could put over her ear and fake as jewelry. And th so the quill was born. The quill, uh, this is a stainless steel. They work in stainless and, and high carbon over there, but this is a stainless steel. Um, you have a pyramidal point on this end. And then on this end, you have a flat spade-like um, slotted screwdriver type point um, it does not come wrapped it comes like this it comes in a large and a smaller and a thinner size um, but really this is like a multi-tool it's a multi-tool spike i like it mostly as a weapon because you can put it in various grips and go to town this is my favorite grip right here because you can use your hammer fist uh, but also if you use a regular punch that's pretty nasty too um, but this thing, as I discovered once I got it and started carrying it in my pocket, has a million uses. 
you can pull out staples on this end. You can carb your your uh, coffee drink on this end. Uh, you can do all sorts of tough uh, stuff, scraping, poking, uh, reaching. Sometimes you just need just a little reach. You can hook it or you can press it, whatever it is. These spikes have a lot of different uses. This one to me, um, I don't know. I just love the quill. I love that shape. It reminds me of, uh, of Maui's hook. Um, but so I took that jute, wrapped it there because I saw... Um, I saw others doing that, wrapping it with a 550 paracord or, or what have you. And for me, this is not a large one, so 550 paracord would be too much in there and would not leave enough room for my fingers. So the jute works perfectly. And I have to say, just the look of it against the shape of the of the Wingard wearables quill, it's so cool. It's so cool. But uh, really, to me, it needed that little extra width just for this kind of thing for punching like that. All right, next up is something that I made myself. It's a, uh, uh, it's the, well, here is the steel version. I still have to have this heat treated. That's A-E-B-L. I call it the Liberator. It's a, uh, a chisel ground, double-edged pical knife. Well, this is, it's G10 analog. So you can carry this anywhere and it's not gonna be detected, at least not by metal. If they have a G10 detector, you're screwed. Uh, but this uh, so far they don't have that and this will uh, help liberate you from a bad ex you know someone's choking you in the in the airport bathroom well you don't carry this at the airport but let's just set up that scenario because it sounds cool uh say you're using the urinal at the airport bathroom uh, it's quiet in there it's late no one's there someone knees you in the back of the thigh you go down to one knee you wrap everything up you're good to go you turn around and you pull this out of your pocket uh, cause the guy's got his hands around your throat and he's asking for your money already. So you pull this out of your pocket, bury it in his arm, remove his arm from your hand and then do what else you got to do. I know the scenario, it needs work. I just came up with it on the fly. Uh, but you know, there are non-permissive environments where you can carry sharp things that are not knives. And this is one of them. It's a uh, knife adjacent. It looks like a knife. It's not a knife. Um, but it's pokey and it's plastic and it's wrapped in jute and it's not going anywhere from your hand because, uh, well, from my hand, I designed it for my hand, made this one a little bit bigger and this one's comfortable too. I can't wait. I'm going to, I'm going to, one of my knife maker friends, I'm going to see if they can just heat treat this AEBL for me. And I'm going to turn this finally after years of just hanging on the wall. I know I burnt the edge there a little bit. I'm going to turn this into a sweet knife. All right, so that is the Liberator, the G10 Liberator wrapped in jute. Last jute wrapped affair here is a cold steel. This is the double agent. And this was a wedding present from my great friend, Mike, uh, when he married his awesome wife, Laura. I was a, a, a groomsman and he gave me this. And of course, I wore it on top of my suit, you know, so everyone could see. Uh, it was so, that was a great wedding. That was a lot of fun. And what a cool groomsman gift. Uh, however, I found on the double agent, this is, there's one that's a uh, hawk build, karambit style. And then there are two that are serrated. And then there's this plain edge hollow ground uh, buoy here. But uh, I found that the handle in the center was a little bit thin. Uh, for a while, I had it wrapped with something. What was it? Some of that black 220 cord, I guess. Uh, didn't like it, took that off, and then didn't use this knife for a long time, didn't consider it. Uh, and then I wrapped it in jute, and it's 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 seeing a new a new dawn. Uh, I do have to still shellac it and get it nice and secure, but I tightened this. I did this so tightly, and I have two uh, uh, two layers that it's it's really on there nicely. I don't really need the shellac other for other than for longevity and looks. Uh, but this is such a cool knife. There have been times where I've wished it didn't have one of the rings. Um, but with the extra jute there to to um, make the handle wider, my fingers fit in those uh, holes much better. You know, like uh, brass knuckles, sometimes if they're not the right size for your hands, they spread your fingers out in a compromising way, especially if you're going to make impact. Uh, this was doing that, but with that extra jute cord wrap in there, 
it uh, it makes it fit much better. This is such a cool knife. I need to carry this one more, but this is one that I have to carry in the waistband um, with the cord wrapped around the, the belt. Uh, I tried to carry this neck knife. It's just too damn big uh, hanging around the neck. So, All right. Now we're going to move on to Sukamaki and sort of Japanese uh, style wraps. Um, and first, I'll start with this one. This is the Bright for War. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Wait, well, let me start. Well, let me start with this. Sorry. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> let me start with this. This is the CRKT Obaki. And um, someone, oh, oh, the commenter, I keep coming back to the commenter. He carries this knife. I love this knife. This is probably one of my favorite CRKT knives, period. What do they say? Full stop. Uh, this is a James Williams design. James Williams is an American master of the Japanese blade arts. He's been on this show. He also designs, as well uh, as his sons, designs knives that get made under his own shingle and then also uh, get licensed out to CRKT and other companies. Uh, but this Obaki has been out for a number of years. I'm, I'll start with this cool feature. And you know, I'm not a skull guy in general, uh, but this knife comes with this cordage and a little skull on it, a little skull bead. And I really like it. I think it's cool as hell on this one, especially. So the CRKT, it's a, it's a, um, <clears throat> the Obaki is a Quaken or a, sort of traditional style tanto. It, it has that splash pattern. I'm not crazy about the splash pattern, but I I can live with it. Uh, this is a, a um, what is the blade steel? I think this is, sorry, I'm off screen. Uh, I think it's not marked. I'm pretty sure this is an 8CR. If it's not 8CR, it's D2, but I'm pretty sure this is 8CR. This has an amazing wrap on it. You look at the handle, it is 100% neutral. There's no guard anywhere. There's no nothing stopping you from sliding up on the blade except for this exceptional wrap. They did such an amazing job on this wrap. So a Tsukamaki wrap or a Japanese um, samurai style wrap has alternating peaks. So you have <clears throat> two cords that are wrapping around, and when they meet in the middle, uh, they wrap around each other and then continue around the handle. Wrap, wrapping around each other creates a peak. Those peaks alternate if you look at it from the top down. And those alternating peaks and valleys give such amazing grip, especially when the cordage is soaked in epoxy and it's hardened, and that's the case here. So that, that epoxy does not move at all. I think that's synthetic ray skin underneath. Uh, traditionally, it's ray skin underneath that grips onto the lace so that the lace doesn't move. And in this case, it's it's faux, but you get you get the uh, same effect here. This is such an awesome knife. Very very sharp, hollow ground, very pointy, and all. And you could use this uh, in reverse grip like that, reverse grip like this, standard grip. It's good to go. Great sheath too. Small and discreet enough, uh, but good lashing points here. If you wanted to put any one of the uh, famous clips on there, the DCC or the ulti clip, what have you, it's good to go. All right, next up, this one is a custom, and I'm I'm, I'm going to come right out and say it. There, there are some things about the wrap on this I would change. So this is a BGM custom knife, and man, he's you know he's amazing. Uh, we all know that, and and uh, uh, John Miller, he does these great uh, regrinds, and then he also builds his his own awesome knives. He's known for his extremely thin and awesome knife grinds. This one is his Quaken. I know it doesn't look anything like a Quaken, but that's what he calls it. To me, it's a clip point, but this is his Quaken. Super thin hollow ground uh, blade here. I can't remember what steel I ordered. I think... I went with his least expensive option at the time, so it's probably like 1095. Handle wrap. I had seen him do this handle wrap with the green and the um, purple somewhere else, and I really like the color combination. I probably wouldn't get it now. It's a little flashy for me now as a nearly 53-year-old man, but uh, I do like this very much. The one thing that I would change is I'll use the Obaki. Um, when the two uh, pieces of lace meet in the center, center of the handle, and then you twist them, it creates a peak. 
Here he's not twisting them, he's laying them flat, and it doesn't create the peak. So this is a less sort of grippy handle. It is also epoxied and everything, and it does have a nice texture, uh, texture, but <clears throat> by comparison, it does not have those those higher peaks to really grab onto the hand. One could argue, and I don't know, John might, uh, that he does it that way to keep it more discreet and more slender, and I, I totally get that. And uh, it does not take away from this knife. I do not, uh, you know, I have never had a problem with this knife because it doesn't have those peaks. I guess I would say that that's a, another taste issue, personal taste issue. Um, but just on another note, if you want to get an incredible regrind on a thick blade, like say your Spartan Harzi or your um, or your Hinderer Sponto, uh, check out John Miller. He does amazing work, but also his his handmade knives and um, his own designs are incredible like this one. All right. Next up is the bright for war quake and bright for war is Josh Mason. Uh, he, he's awesome. He's been on this show before and I follow started following him on Instagram. That's where I keep up with him. And he does, he is heavily Japanese inspired, even his logo, which is faded right there. I patinaed this knife and then removed the patina and that removed his logo a bit. Uh, but a great Sukamaki wrap here. Uh, that's ray skin, genuine ray skin under there. And, and then a Turkish knot up here as a guard. So this thing is awesome. You got to check out Josh Mason's knives, Bright for War. He's been doing larger stuff lately. Very Japanese inspired. He's got some American style Tanto he's been doing recently. That is so cool. God, so many knives, so little money, so little time. But I would love to have a full collection of his stuff, too. Uh, this is works great as a neck knife. It does have a big footprint, that uh, sheath, but the sheath is excellent. And the overall package is nice and light. Um, rests next to a T-shirt, not necessarily next to the skin. Great. Now, you, look, you, you can see those peaks and valleys very well on this one here. So your hand just sinks right in. Your fingers find their spot, and you are good to go. Beautiful uh, blade shape. This is 1095 blade steel. And, uh, yeah, Josh Mason, he is awesome. And, oh, the sheath. There we go. Hear that snap? I knew I, I, I was missing the snap. All right, next up, this is a Bastinelli knife, and this is a custom. Custom meaning custom sheath and custom wrap. Uh, of course, the the knife, the blade itself was manufactured by Fox Knives. Uh, this is the, from the Anomaly series. There are four Anomaly knives, and they are a design collaboration between Bastien Cove of Bastinelli Knives and Doug Markaita. And on this one, I ordered this because I think he may have showed this very one on Instagram. And I said, oh, I got to have one just like it. And he's like, here, have this one, probably. But that maroon wrap is just awesome uh bastian does great wraps he's been doing them for years and they are stiff as can be like you see all that space in there where your where your fingers sink in well that epoxy has this as stiff as the metal it's on so a great ringed pical style knife um big fan of that maroon wrap the uh the custom sheath is pretty cool. Uh, this is not the best knife to wear, I got to say. It does not carry the way I like it too much, but I still love the knife itself. All right, next up is from Erroneous Blades. Do you know him? He's an interesting dude. I've been following for quite a while, and he makes some very interesting knives that he wraps. He wraps the knives, and then he wraps the sheaths. He does all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, but he gave me this at Blade Show, and it's just a simple razor holder uh and this i was talking about fred perrin earlier when i was talking about the french badass commando guy he loves carrying these things and uh if he's traveling he'll show up somewhere he'll go buy one of these and this will be his self-defense and he, he he shows here this is one of those ones where you just pull it in and he shows how he uses it and he will uh he'll take it and hit it on his chest and use it or hit it on his opponent bam and that opens it up and then slash with it uh but here, again, this wrap takes this very mundane tool uh, to the next level, if you will. And actually, uh, I saw 
I saw Aaron again this year, and he gave me another one. This is the one he gave me this year, and this one has a glow-in-the-dark bunny uh, Minoki under there, uh, but the mechanism is jacked up. i got to fix the mechanism here. Uh, but really cool wrapped razors. I love the Sukamaki wrap, and uh, he does a great job of that. Uh, erroneous blades. Second to last one here is also wrapped by Josh Mason of Bright for War. Uh, but I, I sent this to him just for the wrapping. So this is the the Copus Designs Elvia. So a collaboration with Copus Designs and Ed Calderon. Again, you have that uh, hooked sheath in case you want no clip and just to drop it in the pocket and then pull it out. It hooks on the inside of the pocket, revealing the knife. Uh, here I have an ulti clip. Not crazy about ulti clips, but that one works fine there. Uh, and then here's the blade. But I really wanted... I had this one wrapped uh, first with paracord, then with jute, took both off and decided I want it Sukamaki wrapped. So I sent it to Josh Mason and he did such a gorgeous job. Look at that. Alternate, alternating peaks and valleys. You've got a purple dyed ray skin under there. That's legit ray skin dyed purple and then the black lace epoxied on there. Uh, what does it do for this knife? It takes it from a very dangerous, somewhat difficult to hold knife to a very easy to hold, very dangerous knife with slightly less uh, um, concealability because it's just a little bit bulkier now, but it's worth it. It's worth the bulk up to have something that you know is super secure in hand, especially if it's something as dangerous and gnarly as this. Plus, it's taking a relatively plain design. You got 154 cm uh, uh, with um, the sort of injection molded handle and kind of classes it up. All right, speaking of classy, last knife here, one of my favorite custom uh, purchases over the past couple of years. Here is the AB Knives or Aaron Bieber Knives 302 with his amazing wrap. He does awesome wrap. His handle work is uh, amazing in general. He puts, he puts bone on some of his little fixed blade knives. I love it. But this is a full-on... Beautifully done Sukamaki wrap. Both sides, peaks and valleys. You've got the white ray skin underneath. And then this handle is sumptuous. I, there's no other word for it. It feels so good in hand. Um, and and the knife itself feel, uh, is, a, is a great user uh, with its blade that uh, is like a clip point blade and a, and a worn cliff kind of married together with that point down low. You still have a gradual belly uh such a great knife and and with that wrap you can transition uh grips really easy because your tips of your fingers kind of lock into those little valleys and allow you a uh, a purchase point to to swivel the blade all righty ladies and gentlemen that is my walk down the handle wrapped avenue i i really like wrapped handles never did before i thought they were cheap um, but I think that that was when, it, when people were doing it with G or uh, with a paracord, still not a fan of paracord wrap, but give me jute any day or that Japanese Sukamaki and I'll love it. And I wonder if it's because the jute to me have a, has a primitive look reminds me is evocative of some of these kind of Filipino, uh, ancient Filipino swords. I like are not ancient, but old, uh, and then, uh, and then the others are the old Japanese style, you know, things go out of fashion, but uh, that's because it's fashion. They don't go out of style because they don't work anymore. All right. Be sure to join us uh, tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. Where we, I believe we're going to be doing a random giveaway. And then join us for Sunday for another great conversation uh, with a knife maker, manufacturer, reviewer, or operator. I'm Bob DeMarco saying for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, thank you for joining us here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. And whatever you do, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear
hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.